Centuries after the great geographical discoveries, in the information era, the term terra incognita should be no more than a misconception. But now, a group of American archaeology students has ended up near Petrich in Bulgaria to take part in archaeological excavations of a Roman city which had long been consigned to oblivion. The reason is the Heraclea Syndica Excavation Project and the Field School, organized by the American Research Institute in Sofia. But why did they decide to come to Bulgaria? And what did they know before about this country? I knew it was in Europe. Um, I never thought I would have come to Bulgaria because I always thought of Western Europe when I thought of uh, uh, Roman archaeology. I never looked to uh, the East, Eastern Europe. Very little. I knew that it had been part of the Roman Empire and I knew some of the ancient history, but I didn't know anything about modern Bulgaria. Uh, I said I wanted something a little off the beaten path and I had actually didn't know much about Bulgaria, so I wanted to discover something new. Uh, and then this year I decided that I wanted to try something a little bit different uh, because, you know, I didn't really know a whole lot about Bulgaria before I came here, except for the, you know, the Roman settlements that are here. This is how it all began. Although our mission is very broad here, uh, we focus on the humanities and social sciences from prehistory all the way till today, um, a big focus is about archaeology. So about uh, two years ago, 2012, my colleague Emil, together with the director of the National Institute of Archaeology, uh, Ludmil Vagolinsky, um, agreed to have a collaboration whereby they would excavate down at Heraclea Syntica with uh, an American and Bulgarian team. The project itself is in, is in fact a field school. Generally, we have about 10, 12 uh, students every summer. And we are very fortunate to collaborate with our colleagues uh, from the National Archaeological Institute with Museum at Sofia, which started the excavation here in the fall of 2007. Heraclea Syntica is a city known from written sources, but its exact location has long been debated. However, a very well-preserved and dated inscription which we found here put an end to this debate. The inscription is in Latin, from the beginning of the 4th century. It was issued by the office of Emperor Galerius, stating that the lost right to the status of Heraclea Syntica as a town is being restored to its inhabitants. The town bears the name of Heracles and of the Sinti tribe, which inhabited this area. Among the most interesting finds are some glazed terracotta masks. We believe they are related to theatrical performances. Other interesting objects include glazed sculpted figures, some of which portray the circle of Dionysus and his entourage. The necropolis is also extremely rich and unique for Bulgaria because it's been used continuously for 700 years. From the end of the 4th century BC to the end of the 4th century AD, about 200 graves have been discovered and these graves help us gain information about the people who lived here. At the southeastern edge of the Roman remains of Heraclea Syntica, there is a massive fortress wall. A channel passes through it for the rainwater to drain away from the tip terrain. It can be assumed that the city was unfortified before the wall was built. Defence measures were taken much later due to instability and enemy attacks. The finding of remains of a craft workshop that produced a wealth of terracotta and theatrical masks suggests that there may have been a theatre on the eastern side of the ancient city. If this proves right, it would have been the second largest theatre in Bulgaria after the Roman theatre at Philippopolis, where theatrical performances, poetry readings and even gladiatorial games were staged. A curious fact is that exactly 99 years ago, in 1915, the founder of Bulgarian archaeology, Professor Bogdan Filov, together with the American arch historian Thomas Whitmore, were the first to describe this area. A century later, their young successors are continuing the tradition, making their first discoveries at the same place. Well, yesterday we found a piece of jewelry, which is the first piece of jewelry they've ever found at the site, um, which isn't at the Acropolis. 
so that was that was a really exciting experience because you don't normally find pieces of jewelry outside of graves um, intact. We found a medicinal plate, which was a stone plate that a doctor would have used, which um, was a very interesting find and somewhat unexpected. We've also found a range of objects from coins to uh, knuckle bones, which were a child's game. We found a coin yesterday, which was really interesting, and we found um, pieces of jewelry and hairpins, which is evidence of women on site, which is really exciting. So that's interesting. I mean, the craftsman's quarter is a hypothesis, and so the materials that we are excavating here will go directly into trying to evaluate what kind of context this is, whether it's domestic or it's um, part of a production process and like what part of the production and things like that. I think the just the overall organization, everything is so well run. Um, everyone knows their role. They know how to help guide you and figure out what you're supposed to be doing, when you're supposed to do it and when just to sort of leave you to, to explore on your own. I was actually really impressed that they took us all around Bulgaria and made sure that we knew about the cultural heritage before we started digging. Because not a lot of programs think that, they just assume you know what you're getting into. And a lot of students here, like they knew about classicals, but not specifically about Bulgarian classical studies. So it was really nice to learn before we started digging. Studying before embarking on the practical study of the past is a milestone. This kind of study is one of the main activities of the American Research Center in Sofia. And what we do is we facilitate research for both American scholars, but also any scholar who focuses on the Balkans, including Bulgarians, Romanians, Chinese, whoever. And uh, we offer various uh, things for them. So for example, uh, the most immediate um, thing that we offer is a library. So we have a very highly specialized library that has almost 20,000 volumes for researchers, whether they're studying archaeology or socialist history or Ottoman history or whatever. Several annual conferences have been organized on historical, archaeological, architectural, social and political issues, and the publication of specialized literature has been funded. Every year, the centre has sponsored about four different site preservation and museum enhancement projects. Last year, the Varna Museum opened up a new space for children, and the Roman villa near Nicopolis at Istrum has been renovated and opened to the public. Contributions are also made to establishing, advertising and promoting new collections and exhibits in various museums. As I stated at the beginning, uh, it all began as an effort to help preserve archaeological heritage, cultural heritage of Bulgaria. Uh, ever since 2009, we established a series of programs and competitions. Uh, we're trying to work with colleagues based in universities, in Bulgarian research institutes and museums, and try to set up teams and push different projects through in conjunction with American-based scholars. We began to cooperate with our American colleagues in 2005 with the establishment of the center by Professor Kevin Clinton. Our work with the American Research Center in Sofia is associated with many projects, such as organizing conferences and exhibitions and jointly publishing archaeological literature. In 2013, we organized an international conference in Petric, dedicated to Heraclea Syntica and its surrounding areas. As a result, an interdisciplinary collection of scientific articles will shortly be published. Projects such as Heraclea Syntica provide an opportunity to organize a summer school for American students. It's very easy to work with them. I'm impressed by their discipline. How do the students themselves evaluate the project, their part in it and its contribution to their professional development? I actually think that this could really affect uh, the way I go with the master's degree because I've never really thought about doing uh, an excavation in you know this part of the world, honestly. I always kind of assumed I would just end up somewhere in Rome or Greece. 
uh, but this actually has kind of, I guess, expanded my horizons in a sense. I know the basics of how to start a trench, how to measure off, how to dig, what to do, the total section. Like, it's a lot of just practical experience. I think the people that are in charge have been really impressive. They, they really know the whole history of the site as well as the whole context within greater like Macedonia, Thrace, Bulgaria, Northern Greece. And it's really, it's really been a learning process, getting to know everything about the site, the history of the site, and the role that it's played in the, in the past. So. Outside of the excavation site, we're also drawing pottery and sorting it and stuff, which is um, also new to me. So that will definitely help my um, knowledge of archaeology. It is teaching me a lot about how the archaeological process works, um, as well as giving me just straight field experience and new connections with other people who will be future archaeologists as well. So, I think it will quite a lot actually. Um, I mean the first time in Eastern Europe uh, really learning so much about uh, the presence of Roman, presence of Thracian, the presence of uh, medieval uh, peoples in Bulgaria, in Eastern Europe. Uh, that includes, uh, we have a trip to uh, Macedonia and we have another trip to Greece and in those terms, it's just going to be very enriching. Being an archaeologist means to discover new fragments of history. The spirit of exploration that accompanied the discoveries of Christopher Columbus so long ago has also recreated history. Is this the same thing, or is the answer to the question, do you feel like Christopher Columbus, as diverse as the fate of peoples? Black Christopher Columbus? I mean, I'm from the States. Uh, States is a melting pot and it's a little bit of everything from all over the world. So uh, Bulgaria, it's, it's a little foreign to me, but uh, not completely. I cannot say that I feel anything like Christopher Columbus, but um, I definitely feel like I've experienced some cultural shock. Not really. I mean, it was, it's very different from America, but it was here, I did research it a little bit before I came, so I wouldn't be completely surprised and shocked, so. I do, I do. I feel like I am very much contributing to real discoveries here. No, I don't want to feel like Christopher Columbus. <laughs> I think that's a very like romantic image of archaeology. I guess Christopher Columbus knew it was there, but we're going down, whereas he's just kind of venturing into the unknown. Our life isn't really in danger either, so it's a little bit safer. I feel like I'm rediscovering what's been lost for a really long time and um, just adding to the knowledge that we have about the Romans in uh, the Bulgarian area a few thousand years ago. So I'm definitely not the first American uh, who's in this region, but uh, there, there are relatively few of us who, who have um, really explored the region well. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I guess maybe not like Columbus, but maybe like the pilgrims more, you know, coming to, uh, coming to the Balkans and settling here and uh, really trying to um, you know, do two things. Uh, we're trying to, with, with the research center, um, bring um, both sides of the Atlantic closer together. So we're really trying to bring um, Balkan scholars and American scholars together to share ideas, um, to appreciate each other more, to share um, different types of experience. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel, I guess, like an explorer somehow, and that, um, I think as a kid, that's one of the reasons why I, I thought that I might want to make the jump across the Atlantic. <laughs>